So here's the login screen. I'm going to log into my account. The first screen we see is what we call the cloud dashboard, which gives us a nice overview of how many servers are currently online. We can see that there are seven currently online. We can see whether any of those server instances are running the current version of Fusion Reactor, which we can see here are the outdated servers. So we have two servers which are not running the latest version. I can also see if any servers are throwing alerts. And I can see if I have a particularly slow application. So I can see that my Struts2 application had a request which took almost 11 seconds. I can also see whether I have any notifications which have come directly from Fusion Reactor. So first of all, let's take a look at the servers. I can see that I've got seven servers currently online. And I group those servers into my two demo instances. And I've got five servers in this Jetty cluster. So let's drill into a server. I'm going to drill into my Tomcat server. You may recognize this from Fusion Reactor on-premise. Let's just slip back to Fusion Reactor on-premise and if I put this on one second refresh, this is actually the same data that you're seeing here as you're seeing over in the cloud. It's the exact same data, just displayed in a slightly different way. I can simply add new metrics into this view and they will be instantly displayed. So if I click on graphs, let's add some new metrics here. I'm going to add memory heap and non-heap. I'm going to add Metaspace memory. And I'm going to add PS Eden Space. We can also add profiles which are made up of custom views of different metrics. I created one showing me all the most important memory metrics. And I can get to that beneath the profile view. And then by clicking on Java memory. Note that this view is updating data in live mode, which means it refreshes around every one to two seconds. You can switch live mode off by clicking on the toggle button at the top of the screen. Now let's take a look at transactions. As we're still in live mode and the default is to show recent transactions, you can see that the transactions are being processed in real time. If I change the filter to running requests, then each request which is currently running will be marked with the green running icon. Let's do that. I can view, take a stack trace, or save any of these transactions at any time. Let's stack trace one of them. One of the great features of Fusion Reactor is that you can instantly decompile your application to see exactly what was being run. Let's decompile one of these methods. Once decompiled, I can also change the editor theme to the display code in the colors that I prefer. Going back to the transactions, I can also look at different types of transaction, such as web requests, JDBC transactions, and subtransactions. Let's take JDBC requests. And let's see if we have any requests which are slow. You may have to select a different time frame before you can see any slow transactions. We can configure FR to show the JDBC variables inside the on-premise version and obfuscate them when they're pushed to the cloud, as we did here. Let's take a look at profiles now. And let's say I'm interested in transactions that ran longer than 10 seconds and have been profiled. I do this by using the minimum duration filter. I can now view this profile and it shows me exactly how much time has been spent in each method. Another way to analyze performance is to look at running threads and CPU utilization. We can see this from the Threads tab. Here, we have all the same functionality as we do in Fusion Reactor on-premise. So I can see the current thread state, and I can also profile and stack trace a running thread. 
Here I can see the percentage of time being taken spent with each specific thread. And also drill into the thread visualizer. Or I can also filter the threads. Clicking on the Stack Trace tab will generate a complete stack trace of every thread currently executing. I can then scroll through or save this stack trace so that I can analyze it later. The tracing view here is really useful in analyzing transactions. As with other views, we can filter these requests. The default is to show recent transactions. The graph shows a breakdown of all the transactions and shows me how much time has been spent in total across the current period of time I'm looking at. The visual markers show me if the transaction was slow, had an error associated with it, or if it had any database components. If I click on a transaction, the trace will be shown on the right-hand side. The subtransactions shown in the trace view are clickable, and clicking on a subtransaction will highlight the details below. This enables me to quickly take a look at a specific piece of SQL or Hibernate call. Now let's take a look at the applications. The Applications view shows me all of the applications which I'm currently monitoring. A great feature of Fusion Reactor Cloud is that if I'm monitoring multiple server instances all running the same application, then FR Cloud will aggregate all of the data together. So let's take a look at our Spring Test application. First of all, let's select the time frame we want to look at. So let's look at the last hour. The Applications view is showing us transactions organized by the percentage of time taken the average time, the slowest transactions, throughput, so how many times each transaction was called during the selected period, and finally, errors. Let's take a look at average time. Average time is interesting because here I can select a specific transaction and analyze the maximum and minimum transaction time. The average is displayed on the graph, which is the light green line. Fusion Reactor Cloud is automatically capturing errors for us, so we can analyze them directly. This takes the guesswork out of figuring out what's wrong with our application. If I click on an error, we can see all of the usual transaction details. We can see trace information, subtransactions, header information, and of course, we can see error details. Once again, we can now decompile these methods to dig into the actual code. Another great feature of Fusion Reactor Cloud is we've got a number of keyboard shortcuts. So here we can bring up things like the Natural Language Time Picker, or change the theme of Fusion Reactor Cloud. We do this using the Q key on the keyboard. Fusion Reactor Cloud currently supports a dark and a light theme. Let's go back to the dark side. Finally, let's take a quick look at the alerting capability. Here you can see all of the alerts which have currently fired the from and to state indicate the current state of the alert being checked. If we view one of these alerts, we can see the details that actually caused the warning or error to fire. Alert checks are very configurable. Let's quickly configure an alert to fire if one of our instances goes offline. So I choose status check because I'm checking the status of my server instance.
Then I give it a description. I then need to select which server I want to check. So that's my Tomcat 9 server. I can also select how long I want this instance to be triggered at. I'm going to trigger it if my server is offline for one minute, and then select a cooldown period. And I'm going to set a cooldown period of 15 minutes between alerts. I then need to tell the alerting engine how I want to be alerted. FR Cloud supports integration with a number of subscription services, such as Slack, PagerDuty, VictorOps, as well as many others. Or we can simply email the alert or set up an HTML webhook. Then we can save this alert and as soon as our Tomcat server goes offline for at least one minute, we'll get an alert on Slack. Fusion Reactor is available for a 14-day trial. Download and start your free trial today.